Welcome, Welcome to, to church. church. Good morning, church family. I'm Jim Bauer. And I'm Robin. We would like to welcome you to the Claysville campus of the Washington Alliance Church. If the last 10 weeks has been as challenging and difficult for you as it has been for us, I want to share some encouraging words with you this morning. The scriptures tell us in 2 Corinthians 4, Therefore we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. We miss seeing all of you. Yes, and from our home to yours, have a great Sunday. You ready? You ready to finish up? Yeah. Okay, pretend, pretend you are in the church on the steps. Okay? Okay, so you got to pretend that you're on the platform and I'm there and everybody in church is behind me. And I'm sitting on the stairs. And they are watching you and they're ready to listen. Okay? I'm so let me get the right music on. Get your bells. Fabulous. That looks so nice. So, so nice. Here we go. Get in the right spot. Okay. Nobody has this.
you can be here to worship with us. We're excited to draw near to the heart of our Lord together. Let's go ahead and praise his name this morning. Oh, don't lose heart, oh my soul, oh my soul. Oh, don't give up, there is hope, there is always hope.
Well, Father, we praise you and we thank you, God. Great is your faithfulness. All the God that we have needed, you have provided. We praise you and we thank you, God. We claim that promise today. And Father, as we pray over the gifts, God, that people are giving, Father, whether it's of their time, whether it's of their money or their finances, Father, that sacrifice, God, we pray your anointing over it, that it would go forth to achieve your purposes, to build your kingdom, God, in this community, in this church, God, and in our world. We praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi, supporting friend and family. Greetings from Cambodia. We want to update with you about Corona as it affects in your side of the world too. We here affect um, by Corona as well. We have um, about 120 cases, but no, no death um, as a result of Corona restriction for um, traveling and no social gathering and um, schools closed, public uh, building all closed. And so, um, most factory, factory yeah, job most goes. actually people are work uh, find like our labor workers in factories and construction site, and all those places work are uh, closed. They come home, and so right now a lot of people are our jobs, and because they depend on daily incomes from those work site, now no jobs mean no food. And as a church ministry, so far for us, uh, even though with the restriction for traveling and everything, but uh, we were able to just travel, like visit home or family by family. And usually we bring rice and to uh, give to them for those people that uh, are desperate need for, uh, for food. And yeah, uh, many of you uh, heard the needs about the Cambodian whose uh, family were hungry and you've been so uh, overwhelming us with your generous support. You sent money to our work special to enable us to buy rice and uh, fish and dry foods to meet the uh, needy families. And so we are grateful and you, uh, your outpouring support and your concern and Corona affect you too, but yet you sacrificially give to the poor, the needy here, and so we are grateful. So on behalf of the Cambodian Church here, we, are, we thank you. Thank you so much. And um, yeah, and so and, uh, we want, we're praying that our God will lift up the Coronas soon because uh, we don't know how long we can keep up feeding the hungry here. Um, so, but as long as fun coming, we're still supporting them. Thank you so much. And we will continue to pray for you too. Uh, in America, and we know that uh, a lot of uh, things going on over there. And uh, continue to pray, to pray for you, and to lift you up, and uh, continue to be strong, strong walking uh, with the Lord. Thank you so much. One good thing is with social distancing, uh, we don't have big group, group gathering, but our church people who no longer can. Uh, 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 no longer meet, uh, no longer able to be in group, but they can meet small on homes, and so we have more home group service, and people inviting our friends and neighbor. These people who normally don't come to church, but now because of more home fellowship and uh, and small groups, other neighbors who don't normally not church people come to church as well. So that's a good thing for us. To love. as a result, Corona God did something wonderful and uh, wrote something good out of this mess. So, yeah. Thank you, thank you again for your supporting, and even though in the midst of a crisis over there, and you still think for other people. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank, thank you. you. God bless you.
turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. Be 
Hey, welcome Washington Lions family. We're so glad to have you here again at, uh, as we continue our online services here at Washington Alliance. Uh, also, if you're part of uh, our family now and you don't come to our church, but you've been watching for the last several weeks or even the last couple months, uh, we just want to thank you as well. Uh, we're so excited to have you uh, part of our Sunday morning services. Uh, as we say, it's not about our church and promoting our church it's about promoting the love of Jesus and what God has done on our behalf, something that we could not do on our own, uh, to give us his son to die and be raised again from the dead that we may have life. And so that is the message, and we want that to get across and get across as far as it can go. And it's been really neat talking with a lot of my pastor friends of how uh, the same thing's happening with them. The, the, this online experience is reaching so many people. And uh, we're excited for that. And God gets all the glory for that. Uh, I don't know if you're watching this uh, on a Sunday morning or maybe Sunday evening or throughout the week. Uh, but I've got <laughs> I've to start with this. As I've shared with you many times, I'm not a coffee drinker. I'm just not. And I know that puts me in the minority uh, and probably allows many of you to think of me totally different. And, and that's okay. Uh, I'll drink a French vanilla cappuccino. French vanilla. French vanilla cappuccino, that's about as close as I get to coffee, 
But I came across this just this week uh, from Brew Avenue, this company that makes coffee. Some of you may be familiar with that. But they have this brand of coffee, or this, this kind, it's called Screaming Monkey. This just blew me away when I saw this. Like, what in the world is Screaming Monkey? How do you get to a point where you name a drink Screaming Monkey? Uh, does it make you do something? Does it cause you to feel a certain way? Uh, for me personally, uh, if you're a, a parent of younger children, uh, you may know Screaming Monkey a different way. It's actually this toy that they have out where you can slingshot this thing or you can throw it, and it makes one of the most annoying sounds in the world. Here, take a listen. That is one of the most annoying sounds you could ever hear. Now, we have got five of these things at home. And the worst thing that can possibly happen is at 2 in the morning, you walk into your son's bedroom, this is hypothetically speaking, and you step on one of these demons. And then this sound happens. Yeah. You have an enemy, this is one way to get back at them. And so I'm looking at this coffee and I'm thinking, what in the world does this make you do? So are you telling me that if I drink this coffee here, I'm going to sound like this? There it is. Yeah, so I don't know. So somebody help me out with that. If you're a, a screaming monkey drinker... Um, let me know. I don't understand it. I don't know what it does to you. Maybe it's added caffeine. I don't know. All right. <laughs> hey, we've been telling you over the last several weeks to stay connected with us. We're so glad that you've been a part of our, our church family through this online experience. Um, get on our website. We're constantly updating that uh, on a regular basis, several times a week, actually. Get on our Facebook page. Get on our Instagram. Follow us that way. You've got questions, comments, concerns, prayer requests. Please send them to connect at WashingtonAlliance.org. Some of you have been doing that, and I've had such, just it's been so encouraging to me to be reading those, some of those comments, praying for you, prayer requests that you have. And I know you're praying for us, which means a lot to us as we continue through these, these uncharted waters, if you will. Uh, if you're watching us on Facebook, share this. Share this to your, your live feed. We want the message of Jesus to get out. You're watching us on YouTube, share that. Uh, if you're subscribed, I don't know how all that works, but uh, just get it out there. Help us out. We'd, uh, we appreciate that. Again, not to benefit us as a church. We want the message of Jesus to get out there. And with that said, we want to thank you for your continued support in all of this. I mentioned before you're sending encouragement, you're sending prayer requests, but you're continuing to support us. Uh, our giving has, has not really declined a whole lot, which has been just a blessing, but we need you to keep doing that. We, we've been finding things that we need to get technology-wise and things like that as we've been navigating these waters, and, and you have stepped up. You've supported us, again, through prayer, uh, which has just been amazing, and uh, we just we want to thank you, our staff, our leadership here at Washington Alliance. We want to thank you uh, for that as well. Several weeks ago, uh, we started a series of messages that we've called Identity. We're working our way through the book of Ephesians, and uh, today I want us to kind of pause and and just kind of take a step back for a minute, and I'll explain why here. Uh, as we go through this, because I, this is one of these books where we can miss a lot if we're rushing through. And I got to be honest, as I was preparing for this over the last several months and moving into the actual series, we're thinking, okay, we're going to go through March, April, May, and we're like, okay, let's go through May and stop, and then we'll do something different in June. And, and I really believe the Holy Spirit has been challenging me through this and all of these things that I've been learning through this book that God's saying, hey, slow down. I want you to grasp as much of this truth is that you can. And I know personally that's what I've been doing, and I hope it's been, been helping you as well. And so uh, honestly, at this point, I don't know when we're going to be out of this book. Uh, I know we're going to be going into June now, but I don't know how long we're going to get through because there are just so many important points. This morning, I want to start with one verse in chapter 5, Ephesians chapter 5, 
the first verse, and then we got to go back and talk about some things that can lead back up to that verse. So look with me in Ephesians chapter 5. It says this, verse 1, Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children. I got to tell you, uh, a study tool that I received here, oh, it's been three, four months ago. I heard a lot about it over the years. I never had it. It's this program called Logos. And some of you may have that. Some of you may be familiar. It is the most awesome way to study Scripture. Uh, You can look at the Greek words, the Hebrew words. You can get a better understanding of what was happening during that time of that wherever you're at in Scripture, those verses of the parables. Why did Jesus use that wording or that parable and thing? It's just off the charts, and I haven't even scratched the surface of all that it can do for me. But one of the, the biggest things that I've enjoyed is just word studies, of looking at a word, and I don't do it enough, but looking at a word and looking at the Greek and the meaning of it, and how does it apply to that scripture and then apply to me even today? And so the, the first thing I want us to notice here is you see this verse, it says, therefore be imitators. Well, imitators comes from the Greek word mimitis, which is our English word for mimic. We get mimic, which is to imitate uh, the pattern or behavior of somebody you admire. So in other words, Paul's saying we should imitate, mimitus, God. We should imitate God and all he is and, 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 and his character and, and what he's created us to be. And he says to imitate him, Paul says, as beloved children. Now this is one of these words, beloved, that reminds me at least of how limited the English words are. Let me explain. For instance, the word love. Okay, we have one word for love. It's love. We know what it means. We know that it means different things for different people, different things, things like that. For instance, uh, the way I love my wife is different than the way I love my children. The way I love my children is different than my love for peach mango Kool-Aid. Although I will say that is starting to balance out, and there's days where the mango is. But, but anyway, you, you understand. So the love is a little different. For Greek, there's at least four different words for the word love. For instance, phileo, we get the word Philadelphia, which is brotherly love. Uh, eros, which is uh, a more intimate, passionate, uh, seductive, sexual type of love. Or uh, stagioi, did I say that right? Storge, 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 and that's a, a love more for parents to children, or vice versa, children's love for their parents. And then there's this word, Greek word agape, which the Greeks didn't even know existed before the apostles introduced it into that language. And this is a godly love, a divine love, a, a love that is unconditional with no strings attached. And that's the love that Paul is talking about here. Do you know that you are beloved by the Father? You are beloved by the God of the universe. You are deeply loved with an an agape love that doesn't matter where you've been, what you've done. All the baggage, all the dirt, all the past, our God loves you deeply. We are beloved by God the Father. It's an amazing thought. We'll come back to that. Now, it's interesting as we see this this verse of how Paul starts out. He starts out with this word, therefore. Now, therefore is a transitional conjunction that takes us back to what was previously said. I've heard pastors say this. I don't know who first came up with this, but when you see therefore in the scriptures, it's therefore a reason. And we need to figure out why it is there and what it's there for. Well, what we know is it always takes us back to something previously said. And that's what Paul is doing here. And today, I want us to go back to the beginning, to the beginning of this letter and work our way back to chapter 5 again. Here's why. You'll remember we talked a couple weeks ago, as we, it might even have been last week, I can't remember, is, is why Paul wrote the letter the way he does and why he writes the way he does, period. So the first three chapters of Ephesians are really telling us a lot about who God is, uh, his character, 
what he's about, why he created us and what he's created us for, the love he has for us. And that when we give our lives to him, how we are new. We get rid of the old, the new has come. Paul talks more about that in 2 Corinthians. But it's reminding of who God is and what he has for us. And then chapters four through six are what do we do with that? How do we respond to that? And Paul writes that way for a reason, all through his letters, always starting with who God is, reminding us of what he's done, how great he is, and then followed by how do we respond. And the reason is that way we have a spirit of gratitude, not a spirit of doing. It's a spirit of gratitude towards him as he ends chapter 3 with, all for his glory, not about everything I need to do. And one of the problems we see, and I have these conversations all the time, that we go the other way, and it can be very confusing. I need to do more. I need to be more. I need to go more. I need to give more. I need to work my way into heaven. And that's the farthest from the truth. Maybe some of you are watching this today, and you can relate to that. You're experiencing hardship. You're experiencing turmoil. You're experiencing stress, anxiety, fear, things that you have never experienced at this level in your life. And your mind is thinking, have I not given enough? Have I not cared enough? Have I not served enough? Have I not read enough? Have I not gone enough and enough and on and on and on? And Paul reminds us, is nothing we can do. It's everything that he has already done. He saved us through his son, Jesus, saved us from what we could not do ourselves. Where it says in John, Jesus is the only way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus says there is no other way to heaven. Nobody gets to the Father except through me. Jesus himself said that. Very clear, very cut and dry. And so sometimes we fall into that that trap of we've got to do, do, do. We just here in Washington County moved into the yellow phase of this pandemic, meaning we can start meeting together a little bit, 25 people and under. And I'm super excited for some of you that are are, uh, a part of our watch parties right now, uh, gathering together and, and watching this service. We're excited for that. We're hoping this just springboards us on and on and on until we can start meeting together live again. And we're working through that, many conversations. Uh, Our uh, district and national office have done such an amazing job of trying to get clarity on what the church can do. We believe we are essential. We believe people need the church. Why? Because they need the Savior. That is the hope, the foundation that can get us through anything, get us through a pandemic, as far as that goes. And so many of us are dealing with things that we have never dealt with before, and we're struggling with this. We don't know how to react. We don't know how to, uh, to, to, to move forward. We're just at a standstill. And some of us are having conversations. I've seen some of it even the past couple of weeks of emails to me and, and text messages and phone calls that have said, you know, I just don't know what to do. Why is God allowing this? What is he doing? What is the purpose in all of this? And we can take it a step farther. Why does God, how do we worship a God or serve a God who allows pandemics, evil, pain, suffering to happen? I want you to watch a clip with me. It's a, uh, about a three-and-a-half-minute clip from Robbie Zacharias. If you don't know this man, he is one of the greatest apologetic, Christian apologetics of our time. Uh, he was just announced a couple months ago that he had cancer and just passed away this week. Uh, our loss, heaven's gain. Uh, what a man of God. What a story. What a testimony. Uh, I was talking with a friend of mine and just uh, the other day even about how every time you watch him, you just leave that video Or if you're watching him live, you just feel so much smarter. And and he was asked by, in an interview, it was one of the last interviews he did before he passed away, he was asked by a pastor of how do you respond to people that say, how can a God, a great God of the universe, allow evil and pain and suffering to happen? Take a look at Robbie's response. 
on the problem of evil, problem of suffering. Mm -hmm. A secular philosopher describes it this way. So the Christians believe God is all powerful. The Christians believe God is all loving. The Christians know there is suffering. This is a trilemma because it is incongruous. How can an all powerful and an all loving God sit back and watch such evil and suffering going on? So he calls it a trilemma. I respond very quickly by saying, why is it a trilemma? Because it's also true that God is all wise. Mm -hmm. We don't end our theology with God is all powerful, all loving and evil exists. We also believe God is all wise. And we further believe that God is eternal. You bring just those two elements into the, into the equation and it changes the paradigm. We know God is all knowing. And then you take the issue of time. What happens over a p- period of time? Let me give you a quick example of this. When I was growing up in India, I was a constant failure, repeated failure because I never applied myself. And then all of a sudden I passed at very high honors and the ability to join the Indian Air Force. Out of 300, they were going to select 10. I came in at number three. So I sit down in front of this Churchillian looking wing commander and he stares at me across the table and he's asking me a few questions. And then he leans over and in Hindi he says, Beta. Beta means son. Hmm. He said, Beta, you're a good man, you're a nice man, but I'm going to reject you. Just like that. And I I visibly felt my body start to tremble. He said, this job is about killing and psychologically you are not equipped to kill. It was a few months after that the opportunity came to migrate to Canada. If I'd been accepted into the Indian Air Force, I was committing for about 20 years. Hmm. I would never have come here. Never would have had the time to sense the call for God into ministry. Never would have seen the life that God has now given to me to be a persuader and uh, help people understand the beauty of the gospel message. That door was slammed. It took years to find out why that door was slammed. There are emotionally satisfying answers as time goes by. I've lived with a lot of pain with a broken back. I have two titanium rods that are about eight inches long, four clamps, eight screws bolting me down. I injured my back very badly. There were times I'd be sitting in the front seat with the car pulling over my fave and I had on my steering wheel and crying. The pain was so intense. And you know what I found? How much it has taught me to depend on him every day to sustain me. There are two things I need with this lifestyle, a strong back and strong vocal cords, and I have neither. And God has shown me that in my weakness has manifested his strength and how his healing hand even came through on my back after years and years of suffering. There is an emotional satisfaction when I know that there is a cross, there is a hill called Calvary, there is a suffering savior, there is a relationship where he gives me comfort. God does not conquer in spite of the dark mystery of evil. He conquers through it. He conquers through evil and pain and suffering and makes you the person he intended you to be through that. I hope you were able to take notice what he said at the end of that. Let me quote it again for you. He said this, God does not conquer in spite of the dark mystery of evil. He conquers through it. He conquers through evil and pain and suffering and makes you the person he intended you to be through that. I hope you caught that. That we serve a God who gave us his son. His son carried his cross to Calvary, to a hill. He hung on that cross that he carried. He died. He gave up his spirit. It is finished. Death and hell could not hold him because three days later he rose again. And now he sits at the right hand of the Father. And because of that, we know that God is working. He is moving in and through everything we are experiencing, not in spite of it. That should give us peace. That should give us hope. That should give us encouragement. That no matter the anxiety you face, the fear you face, the, the, the pain, suffering, whatever it is, God is working through that to make you more of a person he created you to be. But now, 
that doesn't make a whole lot of sense unless we understand the relationship that God wants us to have with his son Jesus. If we go back for just a minute, go to Ephesians chapter 2 with me. Well, before we get there, Paul says something very profound in another letter to the Corinthians church in 1 Corinthians. Look at this with me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest in me. How can you make that statement? And the man who made it wrote a lot of these letters while shackled in prison much different than our prisons of today. How can he make that statement that says, in my weakness, I will boast even more of who God is and his love, his grace, his mercy and compassion for me, his agape love that is unconditional with no strings attached for me. He deeply loves me. I am his beloved. Let's go back to chapter two. I want to read this with you. Tim did a phenomenal job of bringing this whole transformation out, this this transformation because of the resurrection. And understand, Paul writes all of this in response to what Jesus has already done. If Jesus would not have been risen from the dead, none of this would matter. We can't even have this conversation today. But he did. And Paul responds with all of these truths because of that. He's writing this letter, again, remember, to the the Gentile believers, helping them to grow in their faith, to uh, persevere, to carry on. Look what he says in chapter 2, verses 1 through 9. Let's read this together. It says this, As for you, You were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Can you relate to that today? The beauty of when you have given your life to Jesus as Lord and Savior, all of that is gone. There is a transformation that takes place. There's a change. There's new that comes. He goes on. But because of his great love, there it is, that agape love, agape love, no strings, unconditional. Because of that love, his great love for us, God who is rich in mercy made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. You see this? Please take note of this. Nothing we can do. It's all because of God's grace through his son. And God raised us up with Christ and seated him at the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Jesus Christ. Here it is. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Last week, we looked at Ephesians 4.1, when Paul says about, of, of, about embracing your calling. Let me read it to you very quickly. He says, as a prisoner of the Lord, under his authority, I urge you to live a life worthy of your calling. We don't know what our calling is if we don't embrace the words of Ephesians 2. The fact that Jesus died and rose again, that we may have life, and all we have to do is say yes to him. You see, only can we respond to God's call on our life after we have said yes to his son Jesus. Only can we respond to the call of God on our life till we've said yes to his son Jesus. Have you done that? Many of us are struggling with our call. We're struggling with fear. We're struggling with anxiety and on and on and on. We've said it a hundred times. But to be in the presence of God and be in his care and his provision and to, as Robbie said, to understand that he is conquering through our depression, he's conquering through our anxiety, through our pain, through our suffering, is to have a relationship with him that he may change our perspective. 
And then, and only then can we begin to understand our calling. Next week, we're going to dive into what does it mean to be imitators of God, his beloved children. I mean, that just seems impossible, doesn't it? How do I imitate him? I mean, he's God of the universe. He's created things we can and cannot see. He's over everything. He holds the, the, the world in the palm of his hand. And Paul's saying, be imitators of that. And the only way we can do that is to, number one, have a relationship with his son. And then, in response to that, allow that internal work to continue within us that with our outside we become more of who God is we take on more of his characteristics we're going to talk more about that next week but in the meantime I just I I cannot end today without giving you an opportunity to respond to what Paul is saying here in Ephesians chapter 2 I want to just take a moment I want to pray with you and I want to ask if, if you're watching this and you do not have the assurance of eternal life. You don't know if, if, if the Lord were to take you today, we're not guaranteed tomorrow. That you're not sure if you would have eternal life. You don't know if you'll spend eternity with him. It's nothing you can do. Jesus did all of it. That's what Paul is. We have to understand that. Please don't miss this. God says, will you receive my son? The only way to get to me, God says, Jesus said it himself, is through the son. Would you receive him today? I just want to pray a simple prayer. It's just a prayer that says, God, I'm giving you all of me. I want you to be my Lord and Savior. I want to pray that. If you have already received him as Lord and Savior, would you just in response maybe bow your head, close your eyes, and let the Holy Spirit speak to you through his message today, through his words today. What is he trying to bring out of you? What is he trying to fine tune? What is he trying to mold in you? What in you needs to be given to him today? And you can pray right where you're at as well. But I want to pray for you that one or two or three that have never given their life to Christ. And and when we're done, I just want to end today by reading some scripture of more about who God is. As a team, we read this together before we uh, did this service and put this service together. It's in Psalm chapter 145, and I want to read that to you as a closing prayer. But in the meantime, wherever you are, on your couch, in your kitchen, living room, wherever you are, would you just bow your head And would you close your eyes? And if you have not received Jesus as Lord and Savior, if you don't know, because the Bible says you can know that you have eternal life. The gospel writer tells us in 1 John, you can know. I want you to know that today. I want you to be able to experience your calling. It starts with a relationship with Jesus. If you're that person, would you please pray this with me right now? Lord Jesus, I know there is nothing I can do to get into your heaven. I can't go to church enough. I can't give enough money. I can't do enough good things. I can't read enough about you. The only way is through a relationship with Jesus. Lord, I know that Jesus died on that cross for me. And I know that he rose again for me. And I ask right now, Jesus, would you come into my heart? Would you cleanse me? Would you forgive me of all of my sins, all the guilt, all the shame, all the pain, everything that I have done? Would you strip it away? And would you make me new right now? And would you put me on a path that can make me more like you've created me to be. Jesus, would you come in and be my Savior? Would you be my Lord? And I thank you. I thank you. Amen. Amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer today, would you let us know? We want to give you something. We want to pray for you. We want to encourage you. We're not just going to let you go. We want to lock arms with you. Put it in the comments section. Send us a note, connect at washingtoncma.org. Yeah, we, we just, we love you, but God loves you so much more. Let me end our service this way. Psalm chapter 145, a reminder 
again of just how great God is. Let this be a prayer as we close. If you want to follow along with me, you can. You just want to bow your heads and take it all in. You can do that as well. It says this, I will exalt you, O God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation will command your works to another. They will tell you of your mighty acts. They will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and I will meditate on your wonderful works. They will tell of the power of your awesome works, and I will proclaim your great deeds. They will celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All you have made will praise you, O Lord. Your saints will extol you. They will tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might so that all men may know your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is faithful to all his promises and loving towards all he has made. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up all those who bow down. The eyes of, the, of all who look to you and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving toward all he has made. The Lord is near to all who call on him and to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love them. Love him, but the wicked will be destroyed. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning and being a part of our service and worshiping the Lord with us. It's been great to have you here. And thank you to all of you who came out live at our in-person watch services this morning. How good is it to be able to gather together even a little bit again? And if you missed it, don't worry. You can still sign up for next week. Just go to our website, washingtoncma.org, and sign up for a watch party today. Continue to join us online all week long as we have a lot of things to offer. You don't want to miss it. You can find a full listing of our online event schedule at our website as well. Again, thank you so much to all of you for all that you do to support us here at Washington Alliance Church, where it is our mission to follow Jesus as we worship, connect, and serve Him together.